Hi everybody, Dancing Dog 60. Thank you for gifting some memberships. Uh, I'm going to do that as well. It's the beginning of the week, the first stream of the week. So I always gift five memberships to kick the week off. And also today is a subscriber stream. Oh, thank you, Paul. Today is a subscriber stream. If you're a subscriber to this channel and you, hey Tiff, thank you for gifting a membership. The chat is moving fast today though. Uh, if you're a subscriber for any amount of time, if you just hit subscribe now, you'll be able to join the chat. Uh, all right, so let me gift those five memberships before we get on to today's uh, stories. Hold on, here we go. Ta-da, here they come. Yay, so thank you everybody so much. Thank you for joining today's stream. Uh, and thank you everybody who's a member. It's very much appreciated. Uh, and five people just, you know, we just, we've had 11 members just get uh, joined in today. So it's fantastic. Oh, I love the popcorn there, Stebity. Thanks, Writer Boy, for gifting a membership. All right, so uh, today um, I'm trying something a little different. Uh, YouTube has recommended running, uh, let, letting them choose mid-rolls. So uh, the stream might get interrupted for you uh, with a quick ad. Uh, and then you'll be brought right back to the stream once it's done. This is something we're trying this week. And I, of course, uh, would want your feedback as to how you feel, how you feel it's working. Uh, hey, in Bosnia there, Rio. I'll do shout outs at the end of, uh, at the end of the stream. Hey, Randy. Uh, but first we're going to get to the, uh, the three stories of the day. And of course, as always, please try to keep your comments and questions to the story at hand. And I'll probably only be able to answer your question, uh, you know, once we get to the, op the, to the question section of each story. Uh, I mean, you can try. Sometimes I'll see your comment, uh, but, um, uh, you know, I just want you to know. All right. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, story number one. Here it comes. One second. Where did it go? Boop. Oh, I covered Supergirl's face. Hold on. Let me fix it. There we go. Oh, now I'm covering David Corn Sweat's face. Oh, no. All right. Oh, hey, Brad. Sleep, sweet dreams. Sweet dreams, Brad. All right. Millie Alcock was cast. That is a crazy name. Millie Alcock was cast as Supergirl yesterday. Uh, I wish that they could have kept it a surprise. Uh, but unfortunately, I guess the trades got a, a, a heads up as to uh, that they were casting the role. Uh, and then um, uh, the rap got the official story because, you know, the, the rap is very friendly with uh, James Gunn. Uh, and then everybody else uh, picked it up. So I'm hearing that this is just a cameo in Superman Legacy, but she will show up there. Uh, it'll either be during the movie, maybe it'll be, uh, maybe it'll be uh, an end credit scene, but she, uh, that's why she's being cast now, even though there isn't even a director yet uh, for Super, Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. Although, we'll talk about that in a moment. But here's something interesting, Kate Heron, uh, Kate Heron liked apparently the Supergirl tweets and I saw some people speculating as to whether or not she might be directing the movie. And I must say, if Kate Heron were to direct Supergirl, I would be a little bit more excited about it. Uh, I also thought it was interesting that HBO tweeted uh, because of course uh, Millie Alcock was the star of House of the Dragon. So they're saying from House of the Dragon to Supergirl, although uh, Ryan Palms had a funny quote on Twitter where he said from House of, uh, that's one of you, Ryan, I don't know if you're in the chat today, from House of Dragon to House of Jor-El. So I thought that was pretty clever. Uh, but yeah, so uh, I think maybe one of the reasons she got the gig was because she uh, was on an HBO, therefore Warner Brothers show. Uh, that to me would be very, very interesting. So you would really want to get onto a show, uh, you know, in the future on a streaming service because it might mean that you would have the edge in, in casting. You guys want a poll on this? Thanks for gifting a membership, Tiff. Okay, we'll do a poll. All right, start a poll. Uh, and then I'll tell you what I think. Do you think Millie Alcock is a good choice for Supergirl? Sure do. Need to see her in cost need to see her in action because it's not just the costume you know a horrible choice there you go okay anyone can vote in a poll 
Although really, all you have to do is hit subscribe to be able to chat. So really, anybody can do anything today. Uh, all right, so you guys can vote on that while we discuss this. So, by the way, those David Corn sweat images of him in the suit going around uh, Twitter the other day were not, uh, they were not real. <laughs> they would not have that kind of a leak. Uh, and that would be just horrific if they had, a, I mean, James Gunn said you weren't going to see him in the suit until like a trailer. So it would be just absolutely horrific if, if it leaked like that. So we still haven't seen the suit. Now, do I think that Millie Alcock is well cast? Hmm. I think she's sort of small, you know, in stature, you know, physically for the role. Uh, but Zoe Saldana was very convincing as Gamora. So, you know, I think that could maybe work out. I do think that she does not have the farm girl element that is so often associated with Supergirl. Uh, maybe, you know, Sydney Sweeney was on Euphoria. Too bad she was already signed on for the Madam Web movie. I think Sydney Sweeney would have been an excellent Supergirl, like a really, really strong Supergirl. I think people would have loved her in that role. Uh, I think she would have been better received. Uh, but uh, she didn't get it. <laughs> All right. But they made it very clear, James Gunn, that he wants to go with an angry Supergirl, like an elf. You know, oh, it's an angry Supergirl. And I think that Millie Alcock is actually a great choice for that. I think she could probably portray that very well. Uh, so I, I think she'd be a, a nice choice uh, in, in, when you're going in that dire direction. Also, she has a lot of House of Dragon fans. Uh, so I think a lot of people would, would, you know, would, you know, you can build off of that. But here's what I thought was the most concerning that I really did not care for. In the rap article, they said that this would only be loosely based on the Woman of Tomorrow comic. Here's that comic. And that really surprised me. Now, on the one hand, I think that's, whew, maybe a good sign because I don't think that story would do well as a film. However, now you're just gonna have people annoyed that it's not like the comic. So I don't understand why they wouldn't just say they were making a Supergirl movie. I don't see any reason to even have referenced this comic if you're not going to be actually adapting it. Like, why did we go through all that conversation about Tom King? Why did we have all that stuff if that's not what we're doing? Uh, I wish they had just announced that it was going to be a Supergirl movie if, if, they, if that's not going to be tied in. I guess they like the title, maybe, Woman of Tomorrow, but I don't know. Woman of Tomorrow sounds like a streaming show to me, not a movie. Uh, I don't know if I even would make a standalone Supergirl movie, considering how some of the female-led superhero movies are doing right now. I mean, they were doing really well for a while, but it's been tough. It's been really difficult. I perhaps would prefer to have a Superman legacy movie expanded just with the Superman family and perhaps have Supergirl factor in larger into the film. But no, instead James Gunn is going with this Big Bang approach where he's, you know, we're talking about somebody who has just a cameo in the movie, you know? And that's what I think is kind of like, this is where I think comic book movies can get exhausting and where they can lose focus. Uh, you know, what about all the other characters in the film? You know, I think that James Gunn, maybe he wants, he's worried about making sure that his, his DC sticks. That's right, SMR Goose, there is a Game of Thrones curse. I hope it ends, you're right, I hope it ends with Millie. Uh, that's tr very true. You know, even Matt Smith has had a difficult time. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, the, may the movie might be amazing. Uh, and I think that it's, it's weird to start off with Superman because that's what Zack Snyder did. So I feel like that's a lot, it's like the same thing. That's right, Joy, Pedro Pascal did escape the curse. He did escape it, good for him. He really escaped it, uh, although his role was very small. That's, he, he did technically escape it though. That's right, the, the guy, Taiwan, there is a little bit of a DC curse as well. So what if there's just two curses at play here? Oh, that would be just awful. We'll see what they decide to do. I mean, we ha really have to see the movie. I guess I don't want to be too negative about it. And some of you might be like, too late, Grace. <laughs> but I will say that we weren't supposed to be talking about DC for a while. We were supposed to be taking a break. And I applauded James Gunn for him wanting to, to take a break, you know, and to not really show the suit and really not talk about Superman legacy perhaps until at least Comic-Con of this year. So, but here we are yet again, already talking about Supergirl. Uh, and, and, and it's, you know, I think that a lot of people, it did trend to its credit. Millie Alcock did trend, Supergirl did trend, as many of you predicted when it was finally actually cast, it trended. Um, and I'm sure people will pay attention to the movie, but the question is, will people go to theaters to see it? Uh, I think we have to see how many movies are coming out that year. And I do think it's gonna be weird to have 
David Corrin sweat as Superman coming out with a movie the same year as Robert Pattinson returns as Batman, yet they're not in the same uh, universe. But it really is just too early for this film. Uh, it's really just too early, and we haven't seen anything from it. And so uh, I'm hoping that it's a good movie. I would love DC movies to get back online. I started to watch the Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League cutscenes today. I'm going to try and review that. It's only three and a half hours, so I think I can get through it. Uh, and I was like, I just love being in this world. You know, I just really love DC. I would love, I mean, Superman, I mean, Super a Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League has plenty of its own drama that it's stuck dealing with. Uh, but people are still kind of paying attention to it. But I mean, I w I'll ha we'll have to see what the sales are for the game. You know, what are the sales, even if people are talking about it? Because a lot of the, the chatter has been negative. Uh, and look, see, Nacho says it's horrible. You know, so w will that be the situation with Superman Legacy? But I just really like, DC stories, and so I really would like to see them uh, working out. Mika, that's an interesting question. Skirt or pants? Let's do another poll. Uh, all right, so I'm going to end this poll. All right, do you think Millie Alcock is a good choice for Supergirl? 46% think she's a great choice. 45% need to see her in action, but only 7% think she's a horrible choice. Ah, that's great. That's very encouraging. To me, that's good enough. All right, so we'll start a poll. Supergirl. Uh, skirt. Oh, Supergirl. Co what should the Supergirl costume be? Okay, we'll do skirt. Pants. Then we'll do bike shorts. Lots of choices. Lots of fashion choices. Or we'll do a skirt. <laughs> you know. Mm, skirt slash shorts underskirt. Some kind of combination like that. All right. This is a very scientific, important question. It is, actually. <laughs> we laugh about it, but it's really important. So uh, I'm not going to say what my choice would be because I don't want to influence the vote. So we'll give it a moment. Anyone can vote. All you have to do is click. Uh, I don't want to say what I would do yet because I don't want to... That's right, thumb holes, Mika. She's got to have the thumb holes. I bet she does have the thumb holes, by the way. Uh, so hold on. Well, uh, a skirt, Danny, is a combination skirt and shorts. That's where the term comes from, skirt. So I'll let you all vote, and then when I close the vote, I will tell you what my choice would be. Hey, Carla. Welcome to the poll. Polly, poll, poll. You just out of class. I love that you got out of class and joined right in. That makes me so happy. Uh, Jigo, she'll surely be blonde. Sasha Kaye, to her credit, did trend a little bit, and so did Woman of Tomorrow, so that was nice. But I think Millie Alcock's pretty strong, strong enough casting that everybody just kind of got over all the problems they were maybe potentially going to have. Ah, uh, thanks, Nicole. All right, I'm closing the poll in just a minute. We're over a thousand votes. All right, all right, here we go. I'm closing it. I'm closing it. All right, here we go. All right, 51% of you feel she needs a traditional skirt. 27% of you feel there should be a skirt or shorts under the skirt. 16% would like to see pants, and 3% liked my bike shorts, bike shorts suggestion. I would go with skirt. Uh, and she's got to have the high, the high boots, 100%, like, uh, like Wonder Woman does. But I think a skirt. Uh, I think, you know, you can't have, uh, you know, she's flying around. You want women to like this movie. But I think a skirt or shirt, shorts under the skirt like a cheerleader would wear satisfies everybody. You've got the cute skirt. You've got the flair. You've got the movement. But then also she can fly around and not have anybody looking up her skirt, which I think is really kind of important. Uh, I just don't think you can do the skirt, uh, which makes any It just doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's just like, you know, they had to go with the wedge heel. So nobody would wear high heels. No one would wear spike high heels to fight crime. But they would wear a wedge because it's very flattering. And that's what they ended up doing for female superhero costumes. And I think the wedge looks great. And I think it's the same thing with the skirt. You know, I think like Wonder Woman kind of has like, a, they fixed the Wonder Woman situation pretty well. She has like uh, an armored, like Greco-Roman kind of skirt thing going on. But, you know, I, I don't think it ever was an issue. I think because it looks like she has like some kind of shorts under there or something. And also a lot of it was Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot, the way she held herself, the way she posed, uh, you know, there was no like, there was no, I'm just wearing a skirt, kind of a, an, like an edge to her. Uh, 
So I think that's very important. I think Millie Alcock, you know, has that has that situation as well. Millie Alcock, I feel, uh, I like that. You know, she's not, I, I, from what I've seen of Millie Alcock, she doesn't vogue. You know, that was the downfall of Kira Knightley, that she vogued way too much. Uh, she kind of got over it. She never fully got over it, but she kind of did. Crop top or full shirt? These are crazy Supergirl questions, Dan, but yet they are the questions. Okay, here's what I would say. Uh, I'm fine with the crop top if Millie Alcock is okay with it. You know, I'd have to ask Millie Alcock what she feels comfortable with. Because it's going to be, it's not going to be low cut, and it's going to have long sleeves and thumb holes. So I would, I'm, I, don't, I don't care about the midriff or not, to be honest with you, but I feel it should be a skirt with high-heeled boot, I mean wedge, high-rise boots, and she's got to have the cape. And not like some little baby cape, like a real cape. I want a full-on cape. So let's see what they decide to do. They have to make it differentiate from, I like, just had, you're right, Melissa Benoist just was Supergirl for years on the CW. Uh, Sasha Kaye, I loved Sasha Kaye's costume, by the way. Sasha Kaye just was Supergirl. I mean, they have a lot that they need to uh, differentiate them from. Marcel, how can you say no capes? Superman has to have capes. You can't not have capes. It's, it's, it's imperative. It can detach. It can easily detach, and she has a very big cape budget. I don't care about that. That's fine. Yeah, no small cape. I hated that. And no mini skirt. I thought the tight mini skirt that they gave in uh, um, uh, Bruce Tim was ridiculous. Although I liked the boots. You know, the, 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 like she had like uh, Doc Martin boots on. That I thought was great. All right, does anybody have any questions or comments about this story before we move on to the next story of the day? Mr. Andrew says, is there any other comic book story about, a super, about Supergirl worth telling? Well, you want to know what I always think about with Supergirl? She, for a while there, well, of course she got killed off. There's that famous picture of Superman holding her body. But, you know, we don't want that situation for her, at least not at first. But she dated Lex Luthor. And she was like some kind of a weird clone or something. But I remember when I was little, my dad bought me some old Silver Age Supergirl comics or Superman comics. And I remember that she was dating Lex Luthor when he had full hair and a beard. And it was crazy. And I loved it. I was like, ah, oh, this is fantastic. And he was, he was always like, Lex, did you cause a problem for my cousin? And he was like, no, of course I didn't. And she was like, well, okay. She was very gullible. It was hilarious. I loved it. That's right, Mount Modern Art History, Daddy Luthor. Although I think Alexander Skarsgård is too, oh, well, no, who? Oh, man, Nicholas Holt. Oh, that's right. They look kind of like they're related, though. She looks more like Nicholas Holt than she does David Cornsweet. Oh, I wish it was Alexander Skarsgård who was Lex Luthor. But it's not. It's Nicholas Holt. Whatever. I think that's going to hurt the movie right there. But, I mean, uh, let me see how he looks. But anyway, that's what I think is, uh, that's, 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 one of the, that's one of the Supergirl stories that has always stuck with me. And Neo says, you want to see a super family, Supergirl dealing with the loss of Krypton and everything she knew. For a whole movie, though? Eh, I don't know. You know? I mean, that's what Woman of Tomorrow was a lot about a lot, which I thought was good. That's right, Dennis. Sometimes she's evil as well. To me, the super people are the most interesting when they're evil. No, Matthew, he's not playing Maxwell Lord. Although he, Nicholas Holt would have been a great Maxwell Lord. That is unfortunately Sean Gunn. What? We have the right actors. They're just in the wrong roles. Uh, Johnny, they have to have girl power. Supergirl is a girl, a powerful girl. She's got to be a girl power character. Danny, I don't know if she has to have long hair. I'm open for a cute haircut. I thought Jodie Foster, for like, instance, has a fantastic haircut in um, True Detective. That's right, Fetty. I'm excited to see the look. Give us something to discuss, for Pete's sake. Let's go. Let me see a look. Movies TV Review says, I think about this casting and think about Anya Taylor-Joy as Supergirl. She would have been much better. But she's very busy. But, you know, the, who's to say Millie Alcock isn't the new Anya Taylor-Joy? You know? They have, kind of have similar elements to them. To them.
Fed Sav wants to bop. You, want, you guys want to boop to the next story? You guys want to boop? All right, we'll boop to the next story. Now, I have to be very careful about Thunderbolts, okay? All right, hold on. Boop. Aw, oh, look at this. Okay, so here are the Thunderbolts, just so you have them for reference. There they are. And let's not forget that these guys are in this movie. We're focusing so much on these other characters. And, you know, at first I was like, ah, Lewis Pullman. That's Bill Pullman's son, by the way. He's the president from Independence Day. Uh, he's re most recently been in Top Gun Maverick, where he had glasses. And then he also um, was, of course, in Lessons in Chemistry with Brie Larson. And that's why he's been on the award circuit uh, this season. So Lewis Pullman, skinny, they really want a skinny sentry for some reason. So he's, he's, it seems, now this has never been confirmed that he's been cast, but the trades are going with it. And then Ayo Edabiri yesterday dropped out of Thunderbolts. Was it yesterday? It might have been the other day. But she dropped out of Thunderbolts, and she's been replaced with Geraldine Viswanathan, who I've actually seen recently in the Beanie Baby movie, which was pretty good. Did anybody watch the Beanie Baby movie? Uh, that was with um, uh, ooh, I'm uh, Elizabeth Banks and uh, Zach Galifianakis. It was pretty good. Uh, and she had a pretty big role in it. Uh, and she is instead taking over this role. And we're, I think we're all like, what is this role? Now, all right, where to start this conversation? I guess I'll start it with my first reaction of being, boy, is that a downgrade for this movie? Oh, yeah, it's the Beanie Bubble, the Beanie Bubble movie. I was like, I mean, for, to go from Steven Yoon to, and Ayo Edebiri to these two uh, is just like, you're like, I don't even know what to say. But then I'm like, don't forget that this movie stars Florence Pew, Pew Pew, uh, Sebastian Stan, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, David Harbour. I mean, that's a pretty darn good cast for Pete's sake. So uh, I feel a little bit better about it, you know, but it's still... It is still not great. That's right, Ricardo. And they said that Rachel Weitz is coming back. And after Rachel Weitz's performance or voice performance in What If, season two, then I'm kind of like, you know, maybe there's still something here for us. But it, it's a downgrade. It's a downgrade for sure. Now, you guys want a, you want a, a poll? Are you still excited for Thunderbolts? Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, I, yes. Less excited. Oh, no, we'll do more excited. <laughs> that would be more excited. Uh, as excited. Or still as excited. Then less excited. And then not interested. Never was it was never interested. Oh no, I don't like that. Let me go. Uh, nervous. Need to see. No, that's that's a cop out. Never excited. Was never excited. Okay. All right. So there's the poll. Anyone can vote in a poll. Uh, anyone can vote in a poll. You don't, I mean, but again, anyone can chat today if you just press the subscribe button. All right, so as I said, oh, thank you, Ved Save. It's Wishwoonathan. Okay. Geraldine Wishwoonathan. Okay, all right. Uh, oh, so the ad came on. Ah, the ad came on. All right. That's, well, let's see how this works. If you guys don't like it, uh, we will, uh, we won't do it. We're just trying it. Okay. All right. Not a lot. Okay. You guys are back. You're back from the ad. You're back from the ad. Okay. Fantastic. We're giving this a whirl. All right. So, um, yeah, I, I feel like, you know, this is a downgrade from those two actors. All right. Now, uh, Steven Yeun, it is what it is, okay? Uh, let's, that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, but why, why did Ayo Edubiri drop out? I don't know why, so I can speculate, all right? <laughs> all right? So Ayo Edubiri drops out because of scheduling, right? Now, maybe, 
when Stephen Yoon, maybe she was talking to Stephen Yoon during the uh, awards, uh, all these awards shows, and maybe she was like, uh oh, right? Uh, maybe, you know, maybe it's the Bear season three. Maybe it really is scheduling. Maybe it is. Maybe she's winning all these awards, and maybe she's like, damn, I could get more money. Or she's like, maybe I, should get, I could get a better role in a superhero movie, right? Like, we don't know who she's playing, but, I mean, if she can be replaced by Geraldine, right? Not a great role, probably. Let's just be honest, right? I mean, it's not a great role. Hey, Edward, I mean, maybe we'll all be surprised and it'll be an incredible role, but, I mean, I'm surprised they couldn't replace it with somebody as exciting. Uh, then also maybe she's concerned about what happened to the actors in the Marvels. You know, I think that was tough for all those actors and she's doing so well right now, Ayo Edebiri, coming off of all these wins for awards. Remember she was cast before, uh, the rumor is she's playing Val's assistant. That makes sense to me. And what a waste of Ayo Edebiri, if that is indeed the role. Uh, that's what it seems like to me. I mean, you don't even have to tell me that's what the role is. You just kind of get that vibe, right? Uh, I think that would just be a uh, total waste of Ayo Edebiri's time. So my guess would be that that's what her team decided, if I had to guess. Again, I don't know why she left. I want to stress that. So I think that she felt she could do better, right? Like, don't do that role. Uh, get a better comic book movie. And maybe she doesn't even need a comic book movie right now. I mean, her career's on fire. She's doing so incredibly well. Let her go and make other movies and do other projects. That's what I would want for her. And I would wait, want her to wait until she could get a superhero movie that I think was worthy of her. I don't think she'd be a good storm, David, but I think there's got to be a better role for her out there because she's just so fantastic. I'm a big fan of hers. But, uh, so let me close the poll. But I do think it's, I do think that it's, not great that this is the best that Marvel can do. And I am curious why they want such a skinny uh, sentry. I think it's very bizarre they want such a skinny sentry. Like, we, everybody thought maybe they'd, you know, go more comics accurate after Steven Yoon, but they went with Lewis Pullman, who's very small. I guess that's to play up, not being able to guess that, oh, he's the problem. But I mean, again, I don't see why Kevin Feige would feel he could keep this a secret. Because... Uh, you know, everybody's read the comics and knows that Sentry's in the movie, so it just doesn't, doesn't get, it doesn't make any sense to me. All right, let me close this poll. Alan Richson, by the way, in the new trailer today for the, uh, uh, that Henry Cavill movie, Alan Richson is bigger than uh, Henry Cavill. That's how big Alan Richson is. I don't know if he would have been a good Sentry. I don't know if he has the acting ability to play Sentry. I mean, that's tough, too. Sentry, you know, has a split personality, remember. All right, let me close this poll. All right, 42% of you were never excited for Thunderbolts. What? It's going to be Marvel Suicide Squad. 31% of you are still as excited. Huzzah! That's great. 20% of you are less excited, but only 5% of you are more excited. Yeah, they got a real problem over there at Marvel. I don't know what they're going to be able to do to make people more excited. I think it's really tough. John Hobbs says, Thunderbolts just seems like Black Widow 2 without Scarlett Johansson. Well, I, but I'm okay with that. I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. Does anybody have any questions or comments about this film? Richard P. says Henry Cavill would make a great sentry. Uh, he would, but I mean, I don't know. Yeah, he maybe would have, but I don't know if Kevin Foggy wants to open up that can of worms. Rashad says Florence and Sebastian are the only reasons they're watching now. I would think most people feel that way. Apple Pie, that's a great name, says his task, spelled P-Y-E, Says, is Taskmaster still played by Olga Kurlyenko? For sure. How would they explain that if she wasn't there? I mean, I think it would be awful if that wasn't the case. She better start doing more Taskmastery stuff, I'll tell you that. She might be a, a red shirt. Lev, I haven't heard anything about Songbird, and I heard that Zemo wasn't in it. But, you know, they're reworking this thing, like, so much, so who knows at, the, at, the point, at this moment who's going to be in it.
Timothy says, Grace is the Captain America new costume leak real. I'm inclined to think that that is because it's on a packaging for some kind of uh, product. Uh, it's not, it's not, it doesn't seem to be AI generated, although that's true. These days, you don't know for sure. Uh, but I thought the suit looked much better. I mean, I thought the Sam suit looked, he looked great in it. I was like, that looks great. Uh, Julian says, do you think the Thunderbolts could be good if they spend a good amount of time on plot? I think the Thunderbolts movie is going to be good. I'm excited about it. Although I would agree with many of you that if it doesn't have Zemo in it, that's going to be a real problem. It'll be hard for that movie to get over it with the fans. Oh, thank you, Minaj. Uh, Minoy. I think that's how you pronounce it, right? Minoy. Thank you. It seems weird to me that Kevin Feige wouldn't put Zemo in the movie. That just seems so clear. And Kevin Feige is a comic book fan. And I think not having Zemo in, um, not having Zemo in Thunderbolts is as weird as not having Barbara Gordon in Birds of Prey. And you see how that turned out. Marco, I don't know if it'll have lower box office than the Marvels. Even with, the, with this lineup of super soldiers? That's a lot of super soldiers. But I'm excited. Jiko says, do you want Yelena to have hair long or short? Oh, I want her to have braids. I loved all her braids in Hawkeye. That's right, Jass. Thunderbolts need re needs really good action sequences. That's very important. So I hope, that it, I hope that it does. I think, you know, the beef people are behind this. So, and that's weird. Everybody's leaving a film that's worked on by the people who did beef. I mean, they're very strong. Uh, but these people are still leaving. All right, let's go to the third story of the day. <clears throat> and then you can ask me anything that you would like. Paul, I would think that Thunderbolts could be R, but I would be surprised if it is. I mean, let's see how Deadpool does. Maybe they'll make it so that it could be an R cut, and if they don't release it theatrically, they could release it down the line on Disney+. Plus. That's what I would maybe consider doing if I were Kevin Feige uh, and see what happens with the Deadpool box office. All right, all right, we got lots of pictures for the next story. Boom, oh, I, ah, sneak preview. Boom, baby! All right, Epic Universe. This is the big theme park. Uh, that's opening in uh, Orlando at the end of 2025. I believe it's December 2025. And there's been lots of rumors. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and apparently there are sites that run drones over this construction uh, uh, site for the park, and you can literally see the park being built, which I think is hilarious. And I also was like, give me that link. Uh, so Epic Universe, yes, is trying to compete with Disney. Oh, it's summer 2025. That makes more sense. And so they're trying to compete uh, with Disney, and they're already doing very well with their parks. And this is trying to, you know, Disney World, you can spend a whole vacation there. But right now, Universal Orlando is just two parks. But with this third massive park, they're hoping that you can spend five days there. Uh, so let's see. Now, I have to say, when they br put this, this is the map. We're going to start there. I'm here still. Hello. All right, I thought this looked kind of small. I got a little nervous with how tiny it was, but it's five worlds. That's the hotel in the back, Helios. Um, it's five worlds, but they're, they're claiming there's going to be 50 attractions. So 50 attractions makes me feel that, okay, this might be worthwhile. And I'm like, wait a minute, is like a stage show an attraction? And they're like, yes, it is. But I'm like, fine, that's what it is, whatever, it's fine. This map doesn't look like there's 50 attractions in there, but whatever. All right, so what I thought was the most interesting was the Dark Universe, back there, uh, on the back there. Dark Universe is what trended the most because everybody was so excited about there being like this horror kind of land. And what reminded me of was that Disney has been promising for years to do a villain's world or a villain's land in the Magic Kingdom, you know, to build back behind uh, um, Thunder Mountain Railroad. There's a space back there where they could expand. And now Universal's beating them to the punch with this uh, dark universe world, which is based on the universal monsters, but probably like a modern, a modern take on them. So Celestial Park is gonna be the main thoroughfare. You can see there in the middle, it leads all the way back to the hotel, which will obviously, uh, you can go into the hotel if you want to from the park, vice versa. Although I'm sure you can enter the, the hotel on the other side. I thought it was interesting. I was talking to a friend of mine and we were like, well, what, about, what about the roller coasters? Will that make it difficult? Uh, to sleep at night, but they were like, no, they did a very smart job of putting the roller coasters pretty far away from the hotel, and hey, if you don't want um, to hear the theme park, well, then don't ask for a, a, theme, park, uh, a theme park view. 
So there's Celestial Park, which is like uh, like uh, the, the Greek gods and astrology and like, you know, very, very nice. Uh, then they've got Super Nintendo World, as we all suspected, Dark Universe, uh, another Wizarding World of Harry Potter uh, land, the third one, this time based on the Ministry of Magic. And if you look there, you can see that it's almost entirely indoors. You can see it's just a giant building. So uh, that should be a very immersive experience and differ from the other parks. That's going to be like the 1920s, apparently. Then also, how, uh, the how to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke. I, I don't understand why so many people like uh, How to Train Your Dragon. I think it's okay. People like it. People like it. Let me give you a little clip of a closer look here. You can see the lands a little bit. So Isle of Burke looks to be the biggest, but maybe that's just the forced perspective of where we are. Super Nintendo World looks very small. Dark Universe looks teensy tiny. Uh, and Harry Potter is mostly indoors. All right, so let's see some other stuff here. All right, There's some other pictures. Now this is the entrance to the park. And you can see the hotel there in the background. You can see that there. I think that's very beautiful. It's the Mediterranean look that Universal always goes for. I think that's pretty nice. Uh, by the way, they're probably going to want to make you stay at the hotel. This looks like a high-end hotel. And that would mean that uh, front-of-the-line passes are included. So that's pretty nice. Uh, I think uni Universal, the lines there are nuts. And their front-of-the-line pass that you have to pay for is extremely expensive. So it's a little bit better to try and stay, if you can, at one of their uh, high-end hotels, which are actually still extremely uh inexpensive compared to Disney's high-end uh, uh, hotels. And then you would get instant front-of-the-line pass, passes. All right, then I really like this one. Isn't that pretty? This is the Celestial Park, and then uh, that's not only like the uh, carousel in the middle there, but their roller coaster is supposed to be dueling comets. And I'm like, that is pretty nice. I mean, what's it going to be like to be on that thing? Are you going to be like, I can't see anything, my eyes, you know? Like, how are they going to create that effect? But I would be, I mean, I'm not a huge roller coaster person, particularly like these really scary roller coasters that really go a lot. You know, like I went to Universal years ago and it was um, when it used to be the two dueling dragon roller coasters. I'll never forget before they took off, somebody was like, oh, my safety harness didn't latch correctly. And someone had to come over and fix it. And I was like, imagine if the thing had taken off. What if the coaster had taken off? I just get very nervous about these things. And, you know, obviously Disney, uh, the new um, Guardians of the Galaxy roller coaster at Epcot is kind of a little bit similar to this. Uh, but these are nuts. These roller coasters are nuts. All right? Uh, and th they scare me a little bit. They scare me a little bit, but that's very pretty. At least I'd like to see it. All right, then we have some of the, uh, the, the gates. So this kind of gives you a feel for the worlds. Okay? Now, uh, you want to enter a gate to go to each land to try and create this immersive experience, right? So when you're going in there, this is what the entrance to each land looks like. And this is Dark Universe, which looks a heck of a lot like Villain's Land. I can't believe Disney let themselves get beat by like this. So this is the entrance to Dark Universe. Ooh, spooky. The top there is like, uh, it's going to be Victoria Frankenstein. Maybe it's Victor Frankenstein's daughter, but she's in charge of uh, all the experiments in this land. Uh, and so that looks a little bit like the lightning that powers her monsters, maybe. Uh, then next, here you can see this is the entrance to the Ministry of Magic. You can use a little bit of a better look. There's some little statue on top there. Looks pretty good. Looks a little bit like Oz to me, like the Wizard of Oz. But that's that entrance to enter that land. Then next, here's Super Nintendo World. That, I don't even like Nintendo games. I don't play them. Uh, and even that looks fun to me. There's, look, it says, here we go. And that's how you enter Nintendo World. So that's pretty cool. Uh, then the final one is, I don't understand how this is, how to train your dragon. But there we go. That's how to train your dragon, how to enter the Isle of Burke. Oh, look, you can see dragons flying in the background there. You see that tiny little thing there? Here, I'll show it to you. There they are. Woo, dragons in the background. You see that? There they are. That looks cute. I don't know. I mean, I feel like I'd have to walk through all these gates just to see what it's like. You know? Uh, I don't think that any of these lands are like super exciting to me, to be honest with you. 
Uh, I would have preferred a Barbie land, as some of you are saying, although that, of course, is owned by Warner Brothers, but they could have leased it out to them. Uh, or maybe, you know, I don't know, the idea of a James Bond land and stuff like that. That stuff to me is a little bit more exciting. Uh, but I, this is not, this is going to be Zeke the Wise. This is going to be in Orlando, Florida. So uh, it looks pretty cool to me, though. It looks cool. Oh, yeah. Lloyd, you want to know, okay, which world looks the best to you? All right. Let's do one more poll. Which epic universe land are you the most excited about? Dark universe, ministry of magic, super, these are pretty good actually, super Nintendo, Nintendo, and then the last one was uh, how to train your dragon. All right, anyone can vote in a poll. Let's see what you guys think. Yes, Grancy, today is a subscriber poll, a uh, subscriber live stream. A Magic Production says, Grace, what's your favorite Disney park? I really like Magic Kingdom, but I, really, I think Epcot is like something I just love. David, I only have four things. I couldn't put Celestial... Uh, Celestial park in there. Oh, Tiff, you want a boss baby land? That's pretty funny. All right. Anyone can vote. You guys can vote. I'm glad you're putting your thoughts in there, but you can also vote. Oh, did they just put another ad in there? All right. Hold on. Give it another moment to vote. I think if I were to go to Epic Universe, I'd put that in the front of my Disney vacation because it's hard to leave Disney, in my opinion. I just really love Disney World. All right. Oh, thanks, Digital Maniac. Okay, I'm going to end the poll. All right, here we go. 33% of you are the most excited for uh, Dark Universe, although 32% right behind it, Super Nintendo. Oh, that's going to be the biggest. 23% of you are still excited for Ministry of Magic, and How to Train Your Dragon is just 10%. So that may be where the shorter lines will be. Uh, B. Brown, we already talked about the Sentry casting. I guess maybe you joined late. Uh, I'm open to being impressed, but I, I don't love it. All right, I think you guys are ready to go on to the next story. I mean, to ask me anything. Hold on, here we go. Okay, 10 minutes uh, Q&A. It is 2.19. You can ask me anything you'd like until 2, let's just do 2.30. I'm glad you guys like my shirt. This is a Johnny Was shirt. I just got it. Ah, uh, that's a very nice question, star, star, star on a hill. Let's see here. Mary Rose, I did see the Daredevil set picks against my will. I'm trying to avoid them because I don't want to ruin the, the show. But I'm glad it seems to be going in a little bit of a better direction. Linzek, the live stream schedule this week. There will be one tomorrow, and then I'm not sure if the other one will be on Thursday or Friday. Uh, Sam, Sam Makra, I am trying to review the Suicide Squad cutscenes. I have started watching them, and I'm going to try and review it by the end of the week. Uh, thanks, Randy Grimsley. That's very kind of you to say. Thank you. Brett Evans, I haven't heard anything about a trailer or a release date for X-Men 97, but I'll let you know if I hear anything. Ivan Sarmiento, I haven't seen Argyle yet, but even if I did, I'm not ruining the ending of Argyle. Danny, I did see Bad Times at the El Royale, but I totally forgot that Lewis Pullman was in that. So, uh, I mean, but I'm glad you think he was good there. I thought he was good in Top Gun Maverick. 
Oh, let's see here. Andrea Camp says, what do you think Sasha uh, Kaye uh, should do now that she's no longer Supergirl? Well, maybe, maybe Andy Muschietti could give her a role in one of his upcoming projects, you know, because, you know, he's the one who, who picked her and cast her as Supergirl. And, you know, maybe he could give her something else. Maybe that's, I think, would be her best bet, maybe. Newt Castle says, do you think Epic Universe will affect Disney World's attendance? Um, I do think it might have a small effect on it. Disney World, from what I hear, is way too crowded right now, so I think that would be good if it would maybe draw off some of the crowd a little bit. Mr. Pineapple says, Lewis Pullman was great in the lessons of chemistry. Apparently he's a great actor. That's great. I'm very happy for him. But I still don't think he looks or seems like Sentry at all. Matt Simmons says, if Universal can borrow Harry Potter, how hard would it be to put The Conjuring, Barbie, DC? Well, they have to make a deal with Warner Brothers, and Warner Brothers surely gets a cut of those ticket sales or, you know, the, the revenue of the park because of that. So, you know, it depends how much Universal is willing to give up and if they feel they want those attractions. Tiff, I don't know if Miley saw... I don't cover music. That's funny. I hope, I hope Miley does win a Grammy. I love Miley. Gigi, I did see the new Roadhouse trailer. It looked like a streaming movie to me. I'm trying to get back on trailer reactions this week. As you can see, I've done two already, so uh, I shouldn't be missing any more trailers in the future. Ohad, I like the new True Detective, although some people really dislike it. So keep that in mind. But I thought it was great. Uh, let's see here. Senior Lullaby says, Grace, what do you think of Despicable Me 4? Uh, it seems a little bit too much like an evil Incredibles to me. I don't like giving Gru a baby. Uh, it didn't look that great to me, although I haven't understood the appeal of the last few Despicable Me movies, like the Minion films and stuff like that. Although I have a family member who loves Despicable Me, so it just gets me a little bit more excited about the films. But I feel like they've lost the plot like a while back, but they still print money, so it's fine. Uh, Michael, I don't know if I'm going to visit Epic Universe. It depends on my family plans, you know, because, you know, it wouldn't just be me, you know. <clears throat> Neptuno says, you've heard anything about the Wizard of Oz remake announced a while back. Um, no, I haven't, I haven't heard anything about that. Uh, Wicked is really what everybody's focusing on right now about uh, that. Um, Riley Steele says, are you nervous for Madam Web? I, I, I would love it to be okay, you know, but I don't want another Morbius situation where I'm like, oh, it's kind of watchable, and then everybody's super mean about it. Uh, but let's see. You know, I'm open to it being a fun movie. I hope it's okay. I like the actors. Act, I like some of the actresses in it. Uh, our art. I thought the Monkey Man trailer was incredible. I don't react to Universal trailers, or else I would have reacted to it. But I thought it looked absolutely incredible. I'm very excited for that movie. Hey, Jeanette, 6,000. Welcome to the chat. Gabriel says, who wins Best Actress? Lily Gladstone, I think almost for sure. Let's see here. Tiff says, the upcoming Final Fantasy game has some voice actors from Hollywood. Do you think more actors will start voicing for games? Yes, I do, because uh, if they got made in, get made into a movie, it gives them a front, you know, the front runner to get the, like, you know, um, the guy who does Cal Kestis, right, from Star Wars. He's like, come on, bring me to live action. So I think it seems like more of a viable, and there's so much money in video games. I think you can ask, you know, and, and the more actors that do it, the more I think you'll see it happen. Uh, Max Rolo, you're enjoying the White Lotus? That's great. It's such a good, such good show. Oh, I'm so glad you're on, you're on that train. You're welcome. It's too, you know, toot toot. It's a great time. Uh, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Do, 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 do. Dancing Dog 60 says, any chance that Sentry is a dual role or that the Sentry is CGI so the monster won't be skinny? Maybe, maybe they'll do that, but I don't think that's as interesting. I would rather it be like, uh, I'd rather the VFX be Lewis Pullman's acting. That to me would be more exciting. But they could do that.
Let's see here. Gurkarat says, my predictions for Dune 2 is it makes around $600 million. I think that's an excellent prediction. I would agree with that. And that would be an improvement on the last film. So I think that would be great. And a little higher than Wonka. So that would be really good for Timmy C. Oh, there was an interesting question. Where was that? Asaf says, Apple Vision Pro impact on films. What are your thoughts on that? I would be amazed. I think it's, I saw a commercial for the other day when I was watching the NFL championship game on Sunday evening, and they had this man interacting with his daughter while wearing that headset. And uh, uh, please, if you're going to use it, please don't wear it like all the time. Make sure that you take it off when you're not like actively using it. Um, I'm not sure how much, how popular it's going to be. Let's see how popular it is. Uh, and then, cause you know, I don't think it'll ever be popular enough that you would make a movie, a big movie for that format. But you know, people are always trying to be inventive and find uh, a way. But I don't think you would want to make a movie that could only be viewed in that format. But um, I'm sure somebody will try because, you know, it would get a lot of attention. A Magic Production says, Gracie, have you ever heard of the Kingdom Keepers project from Disney? Essentially, it would be Night at the Museum, but at Magic Kingdom. I have thought of, heard of that. I don't like meta things. I don't like things that acknowledge that, you know, Disney characters are in a theme park. I mean, that to me, I, I, that doesn't work for me. But uh, I guess I would be open to hearing the pitch because I know Kingdom Keepers is a very popular um, uh, product. Stardust 490 says, hey, Grace, how many catchphrases do you have? I don't know. I don't know. And I'm always making up new ones, baby. Uh, they, the best catchphrases are unintentional. And you know what you guys, uh, you know, what you got, what stands out to you guys. Like, didn't you guys say my catchphrase was quite frankly? <laughs> Let's see here. Dan Blaster says, are you worried about further Captain America 4 reshoots? Not at all. Please make sure that movie is good. Oh, hey, Nofix. Thanks for becoming a BTC Inside Access member. Our next one of those will be in mid-February after the Super Bowl and Valentine's Day. Let's see here. Uh, Danny says, Grace, what do you prefer, v v Disney World or Universal Studios for a vacation? I like both parks a lot. I'm a really big Disney World fan, though, because I grew up going to Disney World. Uh, but when I'm in California, for instance, Los Angeles, I love going to Universal there as well. Bye, Gilberto. Jaden, I think How to Train Your Dragon is moderately successful, but I think it's successful as an animated series. And I think it's probably successful as a toy line and, I also, and merch. And I also think, obviously, they're doing the live action upcoming movie, which will play into that. So I think to them, that's really a big deal. Ricardo, I haven't said quite frankly in a while because you guys made me very self-conscious about it. <laughs> so uh, I catch myself now. <clears throat> oh, Declan, the way I said delicious in a Loki live stream was, a, oh, I'm so glad your family liked it. Say hi, hi, to, your, say hi to everybody in your house. Let's see here. Hey, Jack, thanks for joining or coming back. Thanks for coming back. Danny, I don't know about Reacher. Right now I'm re-watching uh, The Last Airbender, and I'm so glad that I am because, you know, I can already tell so much is from the new upcoming show is lifted directly from the animated series. I mean, I watched it before, but it was a long time ago. But now, so now I'm, refre now I'm refreshed, and I'm having a great time. It's such a good show. It's on Paramount+, Plus, no extra cost, and it's, it's just absolutely phenomenal. David Q says, so jealous when we talk about McDonald's. Ah, I haven't had McDonald's in such a long time. It's delicious, though. Riley Neeson says, who's your favorite Avatar character? This time around, I'm really enjoying Aang. And I'm a little worried about the, the Sokka changes, or Soka. You know, they said they tried to make him not as sexist, but people pointed out that that was his, his learning not to be that way. It was a big part of the first season. Um, so I, I'm, but I'm open to seeing what they decide to do. 
But yeah, right now, Aang is my favorite. Oh, my pleasure, Tiff. I'm so glad you enjoy them. Jeremiah, I, I don't want to watch Beyond Book One because they're only adapting Book One. So, uh, I mean, but I don't blame you. I don't blame you for go racing all the way through Korra because it's, it's incredible. Babar says, Hogwarts Legacy was the biggest video game release of 2023 and has sold 24 million copies to date, meaning Harry Potter, Harry Potter Mania is still alive. Do you think the TV series will also be huge? I think the fact that they're redoing the story will hurt it. I think if it was a brand new story, it would do much better. Uh, for instance, while I'm rewatching Avatar, I'm like, if only I could see what these characters were up to as adults. You know, why are we, why are we gonna redo this? It already exists in perfect form. Uh, again, I get a kick out of how many of the episodes are directed by Dave Filoni. Uh, no wonder Lucasfilm picked him up. Uh, but I think, like, let's see how it comes together. But, I mean, you can just watch the movies, as many people do. I don't understand uh, these retreads. Oh, we're over the time. Mm -hmm. Kayla, I never watch the Super Bowl because I'm covering the trailers. And in fact, I was usually I break down them the next them the next day, but now the Madam Web screening is the next day after the Super Bowl because it comes out in the middle of the week on a Wednesday. So uh, I'll probably only have time to break down one trailer, and then maybe I'll have to do the others later in the week. But let's see, let's see. I haven't heard what trailers we're getting yet. So far, I've only heard. I, I mean, I don't have any confirmation on any of them right now. Let me see if I heard anything back. No, nothing yet. Um, so I, I don't even know for sure what trailers are coming. I mean, Deadpool 3 better be there, or we're all going to be really upset. <laughs> oh, hey, trailer talk. Uh, all right, let me do, uh, let's end the Q&A, and let me do shout-outs. Let me do a couple quick shout-outs. Let me just say hi. What's going on? Let me say hi to you. Oh, Adlad, I'm so glad you were able to join in with the subscriber chat. Nick Bellis says, greetings from the land of chocolat, waffles, and beer. Oh, that sounds like a great place to be. Where is that? Is that like Germany or something? Because the, the beer threw me off. Uh, let's see here. Gurkharat says, started watching The Sopranos for the first time. I did that during the pandemic. It's so good. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, Belgium. Oh, you're right. I bet it is Belgium. Token Brick says, good evening from Dublin, Ireland, as I'm getting some assignments finished off. Oh, good evening to you. I'm trying to say hi to subscribers because members, of course, can always say hi. Uh, let's see here. Nameless Desires says, Grace, I'm in my late 30s and I just, you just got your braces off. It feels so weird. Ah, oh, that's great. Hey, that's awesome. I'm so glad you did it. And you know, you, you probably were nervous about getting braces in, as an adult, but you, you did it. It's done. And now your teeth, I'm sure, look beautiful. Oh, hey, Zahid in Bangladesh. Anna in Croatia. Uh, Fumar is in uh, Nairobi, Kenya. Oh, I love, I love seeing everybody all over the globe. Joseph is in Kenya as well. Effie is, uh, says hi and much love from Germany. While Emilio Swearigan says studying for the bar exam in Chicago only a couple of weeks away. Oh, that's awesome. You're going to be a lawyer, Emilio. I love it. Mr. Andrew says, in Barcelona, or Barcelona, I love to say that, eating your dinner, which is salmon salad. Oh, delicious. Very healthy. Leo is also Dublin, Dublin gang. Love it. Uh, Mladen Kafaliev says, hi from Bulgaria. Love it. Man in the Moon reacts. I'm sorry I missed your super chat. Um, I've, started I've started saying, hold on, wait a minute. Uh, oh, do I say that a lot? <laughs> I'm glad I gave you something fun to say. I love it. Oh, Randy, I'm sorry you're sick in South Dakota. Feel better. Joey2099 says, hello from Rancho Cucamonga in California. Ah, what a, what a great place. The Internet's Fairy says, hello from, a, uh, from an Indian palace. And Joshua Holmes says, hi, Grace. I've been watching since 2014. Ah, I love you for that. Never commented, though. Just wanted to say hi. I'm glad you did, Josh. I'm so glad you said hi. Uh, Ohad says, I had a math test today. Oh, I hope it went well. Oh, uh, Batman, thank you so much. What a nice thing to say. 
Jose uh, Leal says, hi, everyone. It's Jose from South Texas. Well, Fall 2 says, in Philadelphia, thinking about quitting my law, for jo law firm job and joining a different firm. Oh, interesting legal journeys today. Uh, you do what, you know, really think on that. That's a big life decision. Um, Keith Owen says, at work in Maryland, don't tell nobody. We won't, Keith. We won't. Let's see here. Ditto says, hello, uh, lying down with my golden retriever. Oh, I went to the, the uh, American Kennel Club dog show this weekend. Not as good as last year, but I still had a nice time. Let's see here. Oh, look. Uh, Abhishek Bade says, first time chatting. I love it. Welcome. And Linzek says, fun open live stream today. Thanks, Grace. And hello from DC. Hello. Oh, and Art is also a New Yorker. Hello, fellow New Yorker indeed. Well, Be uh, Benz Virag. Oh, I see you all the time, Benz. I think we talk on Twitter sometimes. Hello from Hungary. Watching Succession for the first time. Just finished season two. Ah, oh, what a treat. Uh, Ouroboros Snake says, uh, oh, thank you. That's very sweet of you to say. Thank you. Oh, Rashad, are you flying? You're in the, oh, you're in the clouds. I love it. Wink, wink indeed, Rashad. Uh, it's always so nice to see you. Forbes says, hi, Grace. Dan from Portland, retouching photos on a brutal deadline. Oh, that's great. I'm glad we could keep you company. I love that. Midnight Bart says, walking your golden doodle. Oh, a doodle. I love, uh, that's a, 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 isn't that like a golden retriever poodle? That's great in California. Oh, look, Bao Bowser is in uh, uh, Zhejiang, China. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, I love it. Uh, let's see here. Gigi says, thanks for the subscriber chat. It's super nice to be able to join in. Hi from Canada. I'm trying to do a subscriber chat once a month. Ben Zhu says, hi, Grace, watching from Bosnia and eating some French fries. Oh, delicious. Oh, thank you, Carla. Yes, everybody, please like and subscribe if you, uh, well, hopefully you're already subscribed so you can join the chat. But if you hit a like, it would be very nice. I would appreciate it. Hey, Sam in Edinburgh, Scotland. Well, uh, oh, I am uh, Alfarius. Thank you for gifting five memberships. That's so kind of you. Radu, Radul, Radel, uh, Rodel says, greetings from Oglesby. Is that Illinois? Very cool. Uh, Giovanni says, hi, Grace. I've been a faithful subscriber since 2008. That's the very beginning. Realizing, realizing I've been watching for the better part of your life. Cheers from Guadalajara, Mexico. Ah, oh, Giovanni, that, you just made my day. That's so great. Uh, let's see here. Uh, da -da. Joshua Nill is in New Zealand. And Nina is at a Japanese grocery store. I love it. Whenever I travel, particularly overseas, I like to go to a grocery store and a movie theater to see what it's really like to live there. And it's never let me down yet. It's always such a good time. Let's see here. Martin Edwards says, watching from January 2020. Hello from central London, United Kingdom. Ah, fantastic. And Heidi says, hi, Grace. As a journalism student, I've always felt you embody everything my professor uses to teach us about integrity and reporting. What a kind thing to say, Heidi. I'm so, so glad you feel that way. I've been watching you for about a year now. Thank you for all that you do. Ah, well, I'm glad you have such a good reporter, and that's awesome. Journalism is a very cool career, a very exciting career. Daniel uh, Morello says, eating some, uh, editing some, edit, I was like, eating some videos, editing some videos in Porto Alegre, Brazil. Oh, that's fantastic. And then Jas Tandon says, watching from Austin, Texas, while working. Oh, Batman, I have, uh, I have a delay on um, uh, the chat so that everybody can chat. If I didn't put a delay in, the chat would just be zooming by at 100 miles an hour. Uh, John D says, hi all from Yorkshire. Just watching the stream while I'm getting some coding done. Oh, I love keeping everybody company. And Abhishek says, watching from India. While well, Neam says, hi Grace, watching from Dublin. Been a BTT fan since 2017. It's my birthday next week. Happy early birthday. And then Svetlana says, greetings from Russia. Ah, oh, thanks Svetlana. That means a lot. And Alonzo says, just getting ready to go to work at a post, at post production. Oh, that's very cool in Mexico City. All right, well, I could say hi to you guys all day, and part of me wishes that I could, but I better get back to work on my videos. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. The embargo lifts for uh, Argyle at noon, and I'll try to get my video up by then or as close as possible. All right, oh, is, is it Elia's birthday? Oh, everybody's saying her birthday's coming up, right? Okay, that's awesome. You guys are all so sweet. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye, bye-bye, everybody.
Bye-bye.